Hello aspirants, I hope you are having a great day. In the previous video, we have evaluated various aspects of geology as an optional for UPSC CSE and forest services examination. If you have not watched it yet, please refer to that video before watching this one. Those of you who have made your mind to take geology as an optional for UPSC CSE, this video will aid you in kickstarting your journey with the optional and help you to formulate a strategy to make the best out of it. So let us take an overview of the number of papers, pattern of examination and uh, the mark distribution that are there in the geology optional paper. The optional paper consists of two separate units with uh, 12 individual subjects in total. Paper 1 consists of subjects like general geology, geomorphology and remote sensing, structural geology, paleontology, Indian stratigraphy, hydrogeology and engineering geology. On the other hand, paper 2 consists of mineralogy. Uh, igneous and metamorphic petrology, sedimentary petrology, economic geology, mining geology, geochemistry and environmental geology. Both the papers carry equal marks of 250 each, totaling to 500 marks. This implies the significance of optional paper in UPSC CSE or Forest Services mains examination as it can be a deal breaker for your selection into the final merit list. However, let me tell you that any subject will help you uh, secure good marks only if you enjoy it. For that, you must devote some quality time for it and understand the importance of each subject. In that context, let us analyze the optional papers individually. In the paper 1, there are 6 individual topics as I have mentioned previously. They are divided into two sections. Section A consists of topics like general geology, geomorphology and remote sensing and structural geology, while section B consists of paleontology, Indian stratigraphy, hydrogeology and engineering geology. In the mains examination, there will be 8 questions spanning through section A and B. You have to answer 5 questions. So question from number 1 and uh, from section A and question number 5 from section B are compulsory in nature. And then you must answer 3 more questions. From these three questions, you must choose at least one from each section. That means you have the discretion to choose the third one either from section A or from section B. Now, here is an interesting thing to note. Topics from section A comprise all the basic topics which have been overlapped with general studies paper one of physical geography. Hence, you will find ample of materials to prepare and the questions are also generic in nature. However, topics from section B like paleontology and stratigraphy tend to be more technical, they are lengthy in nature and needs memorization of lot of facts. Uh, hence, it is recommended to attempt three questions from section A and two from section B inclusive of the compulsory questions. Um, this may minimize the chances of going wrong in the final paper. And additionally, it is easier to prepare diagrams and charts from the topics in section A than, the, than that of in section B, which may give you an edge in terms of presentation and improvisation in your answers. Like paper 1, the paper 2 also consists of 6 individual topics uh, divided into 2 sections. Section A consists of mineralogy, igneous and metamorphic petrology, sedimentary pet petrology and section B comprises of economic geology, mining geology, geochemistry and environmental geology. In terms of mark distribution and number of questions to be answered remains the same as we have discussed for the paper 1 that is 5 questions needs to be answered in total. But here the strategy to attempt from either section is slightly different from that, that of the paper 1. Topics from uh, section A particularly igneous and metamorphic petrology are trickier and if you analyze the trend over the years the questions that are asked are getting more and more conceptual in nature and they are sometimes not even available in the standard textbooks. Uh, but topics from section B are more practical in nature. Uh, the syllabus is limited to and there is not much of a variation in the types of questions that are asked in these topics. Also, you can use your general studies and current affairs skills in environmental geology and mining geology which can provide dynamism to your answer and can fetch you a reasonably good score. Therefore, it is uh, recommended to attempt two questions from section A and three from section B. However, as a precautionary measure, 
I see, let me tell you, you shall never leave any topic thinking that you can skip that particular question from that topic in the final examination. As UPSC is full of surprises, questions can be jumbled or can come in mixed format too. Uh, so you shall set your priorities right, focus more on the subjects that can give you extra legroom for creativity, but at the same time, do not leave any topic behind. Now that we know about the scheme of the examination for geology optional paper, let us discuss about how to approach the subject if you are just getting started. So first and foremost, you shall thoroughly go through the syllabus. While doing that, you shall identify the subheadings given in the syllabus under each topic. For example, if you look at the syllabus of mineralogy, there are different subheadings like uh, crystal classification in crystal symmetry, physical and chemical characters of mineral groups, optical properties of rock forming silicates and so on. Once you have done that, cross-reference these subheadings with last 10 year question paper. By doing so, you can get a sense of high probable areas from which UPSC asks questions every year. You will also get to know the depth of understanding needed for each part of this syllabus. For example, almost each subsequent year, there is a question on silicate structure asked by UPSC in some form or another. In optical mineralogy, you will find more emphasis is given to uniaxial minerals than biaxial minerals. So you get to know which area are to be covered in greater detail. This will take some time. This, this cannot happen overnight. But once done, you will, you will find your, uh, yourself to be in a much more comfortable space. Then your next move should be to make notes for each topics of the syllabus under different subjects that you have identified in the previous step. You can refer to standard books and do a thorough internet search to make your notes more dynamic. Remember that you shall keep the PYQs handy so that the um, relevancy of your notes are maintained. I would like to emphasize that the note making exercise is the most important and the tedious part of the whole process as there are no ready-made materials available as such. But trust me, if you can once complete this task, the return on the time you have invested is much more higher than any other optional subjects or general studies for that matter. Also remember that when you make notes, keep in mind, uh, you have to cross link the um, concepts for a clear conceptual understanding. For example, economic geology and mining geology have interrelated concepts. If you do not understand processes of ore formation in detail, you will not be able to understand why there are different mining methods and which method to be employed for a uh, particular type of ore deposit. At the same time, you must uh, know what the applications of a particular subject is because by doing so, your process of learning will be much more enjoyable and the misconception of geology as a tasteless subject will eventually fade away. Finally, you must evaluate your knowledge through giving mock tests, identifying the areas where you are lacking and try to improve upon them through multiple revisions and by giving more tests. Just um, just a uh, note that there is no substitute for hard work in UPSC because you mehnat kare bina to kuch nahi mil raha. So um, keeping that in mind, uh, as, as I said, working hard can keep you in the race of UPSC, but you need to work smart for ensuring your selection in the final merit list. For that, practicing answer writing on a daily basis is a great strategy to work on your presentation skills and showing your creativity uh, in the mains paper. Uh, first and foremost, before starting out with the answer writing, you must be uh, thorough with the subtle differences between various terminologies and their definitions. This will immensely help you in writing good introductions in your answers. For example, uh, there was a question on pseudomorphism, uh, polymorphism, their differences in uh, differences and mineral behavior associated with them. If you are not familiar with these key concepts, there are high chances of messing up between uh, similar sounding terms in the final examination. Because remember that writing at the final examination under the pressure of the time limit is a whole other game. So you should pay attention to these small details. Second smart strategy is to go for topics that, that will give you more space to show your creativity by drawing charts, diagrams, maps and so on. Never get afraid of making diagrams because you don't have to be a Picasso to, good, to get a good mark. If you feel like you are lacking uh, this skill, this is a good time to start practicing and improve your creative skills. Third, you must give enough mocks to improve your writing speed. Writing within the time limit can be a challenge. 
the ideal time prescribed is 7 minutes for 10 marker questions and 10 minutes for 15 marker questions. This may sound unreasonable right now, but trust me, with enough practice, even this can be achieved comfortably. This will help you answer all the questions within a time frame of 3 hours. Uh, as, um, as you know that leaving any question, you know, even a single question can adversely impact your rank and uh, the chances of you being getting selected in the final merit list. Then while lighting answers from dynamic topics like remote sensing, mining and environmental geology, you shall incorporate your knowledge from general studies. You can do so by incorporating recent developments in the field of remote sensing, citing the NDMA guidelines uh, in the landslide and acid mine drainage questions, various environmental protocols in groundwater water contamination related questions and so on. This will make your answers stand out from the rest of your competition. Okay, so while you write your answers, try to introduce your answers with definitions for such static subjects and if possible with data sets from, uh, um, for dynamic subjects like environmental geology. The body of your answer should be written in bullet format and you must underline the keywords where you want to drive the examiner's focus. Since questions in geology are more or less conceptual, so there is no need to end it with a conclusion, but you can always show some creativity with a way forward in dynamic parts like mining geology, environment, engineering geology, remote sensing and other topics in general geology. Uh, if you are following these steps, there is a high probability that you will get a substantially good score in the geology optional paper. So let me summarize today's discussion for you. First. First, start with the topics from paper 2 as this, but because this tip, uh, these uh, subjects are lengthy in nature, but they have various applications in other topics. Hence, they must be prioritized first. You shall lay more emphasis on diagram heavy subjects such as mining, economic geology, etc. as they can make your answers stand out from the rest. For paper 1, you shall finish section A topics along with hydro from section B. Then go to stratigraphy and paleontology as they require more memorization. Hence, concept heavy subjects should be finished first. Practice India map uh, thoroughly as you may need it more often you know, while answering questions from uh, sedimentary basins, petroleum basins, seismic maps of India, distribution of key mineral resources and so on. While you draw diagrams, diagrams should be drawn in a box and they should be labeled properly. Uh, while writing answers, your answers should be written in bullet format while you also and highlight the keywords uh, in your answers. Now that I am assuming that you are starting right now, uh, you should aim to uh, finish 80% of your syllabus before February along with one round of revision and write four full length tests for each section. That means eight full length tests in total. So this should be your ideal timeline for five, four to five months. Mm, so, uh, from the above discussion, you must have realized by now that note making and test series are the foundation of your preparation. If you think you should take guidance from your industry experts, we are here to help you to strengthen your preparation. Um, because geology concepts have excellent lessons that cover all the entire course of uh, UPSC, CSC and Indian Forest Services examination which are taught by experts from IIT's ISAs which have with years of experience in the field of geology. If you want, you can avail the dedicated test series for UPSC, CSC and Forest Services examination which comes with model answers, necessary revision materials, quick evaluation and in-person feedback sessions. This will definitely help you grasp the subject efficiently and will provide you with necessary guidance that are required to fast track your preparation of geology optional. So that is for it for today. Thank you for your time. I hope you have found something meaningful. Uh, we will come up with more such uh, informative content that will aid your preparation of geology optional for UPSC CSC. You can check out our platform by clicking on the link given in the description box below. Thank you again.